This is the Canon R5 and this has been my main video camera for almost two years now. Everything that you've ever seen me create on this channel has been with this camera, the Canon R5. But I recently just sold mine, so this isn't actually mine, to switch to the Canon R5C, which is the camera that I'm recording this video on right now. And so huge shout out to Raf and I'll link his channel down below for letting me borrow his Canon R5 so that I can make this comparison video for you guys. Now you might be wondering why did I switch from the Canon R5 to the Canon R5C? Well, in the last couple of years, my career has really taken a shift from photo to video. So I really needed a more of a video focused camera, which the Canon R5C is. Now initially when I started this whole journey of switching to a video camera, I was actually going to go with the Sony FX3. It wasn't until I started my research that I realized the Canon R5 and the Canon R5C are two completely different cameras when it comes to video. It's not just about slapping an additional fan on the back of the R5 and turning it into an R5C. And because I still take a lot of photos for myself, not really for clients anymore since it's mostly video work. I really wanted a hybrid body, something that I could just take on my trips and on my vacations without having to bring two separate bodies. So the Canon R5C felt like the perfect compromise between a Sony FX3 and a Canon R5 having both the photo and the video qualities. Now the Canon R5 does shoot excellent video, so if you're considering this camera, I wouldn't shy away from it, but it had a ton of issues that just sort of seemed to compound over time for me, specifically just because I was doing a lot of heavy video work. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about four differences between the Canon R5C and the Canon R5 when it comes to video that makes these two cameras completely different in my opinion. So the first main difference between between the R5 and the R5C are the available codecs that both cameras have. So the Canon R5 just has H.265 or HEVC and is pretty much stuck at that. The Canon R5C on the other hand has a bunch of different codecs to pick from but specifically it has the XFAVC 4K codec and that's the codec that makes this camera Netflix approved and the Canon R5 is not Netflix approved so I think that says a bunch right off the bat. Now why does this matter? Well the Canon R5C's X XFAVC codec is able to compress and process data a lot better resulting in a much better looking image. So here's the same clip shot on the R5C and the R5 with the exact same settings in C-Log3 Cinema Gamut with the R5C using the XFAVC codec and the R5 using the H.265 codec at their base ISOs of 800. And these shots are taken using the RF 15 to 35 f2.8, so a very good lens. And right away, you should be able to see a difference in the images. The R5C has more of a greenish tint and more of a true to life look, which you'll be familiar with if you're coming from the Sony FX3. Whereas the R5 has more of a magenta tint and a lot more saturation on my skin. If we zoom in about 200%, you'll see that the difference is even more apparent between the two cameras. The Canon R5C also has a dual native ISO of 800 and 3200. The Canon R5 only has a single base ISO of 800, which makes the R5C a much better option for low light. Now, if you don't know what a base ISO is, it's essentially the level of ISO at which your camera will produce the lowest amount of noise in the image. So the R5C has two of those. So if you step up from 800 to 3200, you shouldn't see any loss in quality, which is not the case with the Canon R5 as I found that it really struggles in low light. So here's another example of both cameras as shooting at 3200 ISO, which is the R5C second base ISO. Now again, these shots were shot with the exact same settings and the exact same lens and right out of the camera, you can once again tell that there's a difference in how the video looks with the same differences that we mentioned before. But in this example, we're looking for noise. So if we zoom in 200%, you'll notice that the R5C stays clean at 3200 ISO whereas the R5 has introduced a bunch of noise. Now coming back to our initial scene I once again bumped up the ISO on both cameras to 3200. Now this scene didn't need the additional brightness it's not overexposed by any means and in this example I could not get the Canon R5 to focus no matter what I did which is a problem I run into on the R5 often when using higher ISOs 
whereas the R5C had no issues and managed to keep the image super clean even at 3200 ISO. Next up, let's talk about dynamic range and shadow recovery because I do feel that this is where these two cameras are very, very different. Now, based on all my research, the R5C has about two more usable stops of dynamic range in real world scenarios. Now I have no science or data to back that up. You can easily go look this up yourself or just watch Gerald Undone's video. He goes pretty deep into the R5C versus R5 dynamic range curve and everything like that. But here's what I can show you. Here's an example of a video that I took. In this example, the image is super underexposed. This was at F11 and you can't really see me at all. Now this is me really stretching out the image to get any kind of detail back. And with the R5C, even though it may May not look pretty and you would never film like this i'm able to once again see my face and some kind of color whereas the r5 is really struggling to get back any kind of detail and has almost no color which is always an issue i faced on the r5 whenever i tried to recover any kind of blacks whenever color grading so the r5c definitely makes that a lot easier the canon r5 also introduced 4k hq mode so this is basically the camera filming in 4k oversampled from 8k so it produces a much cleaner and sharper image however this is only available at 24 and 30 frames per second on the canon r5 the canon r5c does not have a 4k hq mode it's actually always shooting over sampled 8k down into 4k whenever you're recording in 4k which makes the image always crispy and this is not limited so that means that you can actually get the 4k hq at 60 frames per second on the canon r5c and you'll see in this example that the 4k 60 image coming out of the r5c is a lot sharper and again the iso had to be bumped up here because the environment was pretty dark so the iso here is at 3200 which like we discussed is the r5c second base iso so not only is the image a lot sharper, but also the noise is a lot cleaner on the Canon R5C. The Canon R5C also has a ton of video monitoring tools that the Canon R5 does not have, and that's just because it's a cinema camera. It's more focused towards video. So it has tools like peaking, which tells you exactly what's in focus on your image. It also has tools like false color and vector scope, which really help you dial in your exposure a lot easier and really remove the need for a monitor, which would you would probably need with the Canon R5 if you were out filming on the field and you wanted to make sure that your exposure was completely dialed in. Other than that you do have some operating and physical differences between the Canon R5 and the Canon R5C so the Canon R5C does have Canon's Cinema OS which I didn't think I would be that into but I was really impressed by I thought that the Cinema OS was absolutely incredible and it makes just using the camera a huge joy. Canon R5C also has an external port for time code. There's a tally light on the front which tells you when you're recording and there's also a red button where the shutter button is along with the Cinema OS badging. There's also a ton of programmable buttons all over the R5C that are labeled which makes it really easier for you to customize the camera and really set it up the way that you want. The Canon R5C does not have IBIS whereas the R5 does. However, I will say this was sort of my biggest contention when deciding between the R5C and the FX3 because I really love the IBIS on the Canon R5. But while using the R5C with its digital stabilization and stabilized lenses that have built-in stabilization, the camera's been really, really smooth to use and I actually haven't really noticed the difference between having IBIS and not. So if that's something that's really keeping you on the fence between picking the R5C or a different camera with IBIS, I wouldn't really worry about it too much. It hasn't been an issue for me. Now, overall, I do feel like the Canon R5C looks different. It's hard to describe, but it has more of a film like quality look to it now that might be just me being biased or me reading into it but hopefully you guys are able to see the differences in the examples that i provided also the canon r5c xf avc 4k again is netflix approved whereas the canon r5 is not netflix approved so that does say something about the images coming out of this camera and them being really different now hopefully you guys were able to see a difference between these two cameras and unfortunately again because i was sick i couldn't go out into the real world and really get the different type of shots that I wanted so I kind of sort of had to make do with what I was able to do at home but hopefully they were able to illustrate the differences between the Canon R5 and the Canon R5C. Now as I get more time and more 
uh, opportunity with this camera to really put it through its paces. I'm definitely going to become a lot more familiar with it and getting used to the settings and being able to tweak and make those little micro adjustments that you can't on the Canon R5. So hopefully in a month or two we'll come back and we'll revisit this video and I'll have a much better comparison between the R5C and the R5 for you. But hopefully in the meantime if you're on the fence deciding between upgrading from the R5 to the R5C, if you mainly do video and I would say honestly if you shoot events I would stay away from the R5 5c because the battery life is going to be a hindrance but if you're like me and you do a lot of run and gun and in studio stuff the can r5c is a fantastic fantastic camera so hopefully you guys sort of got something out of this video and it's made your decision making process a little bit easier but that's it for this video i'll see you guys in the next one and until then keep creating